Test, test. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Huai from eBay team, cloud team. And I'm going to do some introduction of our evolution of our dev environment setup in eBay. And uh, um, if you want to take a nap after a heavy lunch, I think I can understand. <laughs> so this is my agenda. So why we need to have a specific topic around in the, how to set up the dev environment? And uh, what the challenges we face to setting this up? And uh, also I'm going to tell you the history uh, of this uh, process, uh, evolution. And uh, I also will uh, highlight some lessons learned and challenges we have now. So why we have a specifically topic of the test and the dev environment setting up? So the first of all, uh, look at the scale. We are running a pretty big uh, OpenStack distribution on eBay side, even after the uh, split up with PayPal. Uh, the scale is still pretty big. And we have uh, more than 20 components running for this whole infrastructure as a service, including the core OpenStack services, Nova, Neutron, Keystone, and other services like monitoring, logging. So we need, want to find a same pattern to setting the, all these services for a dev and test environment. So dev and test environment is pretty critical for the PDs and the QEs, the developers and, and the, the quality engineers. For example, when you have some issues running in the site, how can you reproduce? You want you probably want the same environment as you had in the as you have in the production environment. For example, you probably want to do some new features, some cool stuff. But how can you make sure what you have running in the dev environment can also running in the production environment? And then we have a uh, uh, the OpenStack will release every uh, two times every per year and how we can make sure the version backward compatible uh, during the upgrading. So we think this is pretty um, critical for us, especially when we're running a live site. You have to make sure your um, service is running all the time. So we want to have a mimic, mimic um, environment that is setting up with as same as the production. And uh, as I said, we have a lot of services, lot, um, not only in the core OpenStack services, but also the monitoring services. Also, we had some plugins that for, the, for example, the Nova scheduler plugins that are running outside. So the dev stack is not enough for us. And we, were, we are using the Puppet to deploy the, all, all the services in our site for the uh, cloud infrastructure service, and we want to use the same for the, our dev environments. We built up a lot of, uh, put up many, a lot of efforts to building the whole puppy thing up. So we want to using the same thing. So you can have the same way to deploy your service in the dev and the production. And meanwhile, you can also testing your puppet, puppet code for the deployment. So you can make sure, okay, I can use upgrade this puppet code, puppet manifest, and it will uh, work when I upgrade in my production. Also, we want to use in the same package, beautiful all the components, and the same topology, because we are running in using the Noma cell for each uh, availability zone. And they also want using the uh, low OVS, we are running a pretty fair large SDN solution in the site. So we want to have the same thing in the dev environment. And this thing has to be simple because you, when you, for example, when you have a new hire, you don't want him to go through a lot of document to setting his own dev environment up. And it should be repeatable. So saying that you have a one test environment, have a one uh, dev environment, you want to set up another one. This should be a repeatable process. And all the process, the thing, um, should be still working when the 
for example, when you're upgrading to the Kilo version, still, it should still work. So these is uh, the challenges we had. So we running, um, at first we are using the, the, the shared hardware lab for our QA and the, the, the developer environment. And before that, let me introduce, introduce some uh, de deployment process in the eBay. As I said, I, we are using the Puppet to follow all the services deployment for our cloud services. So um, for each of services, we have a Puppet module. And all these modules are deployed to the, in the Puppet master. And we are using Foreman as ENC server um, to our services. So how many people here are familiar with this uh, form and puppet master? Can you show your hand? Okay, um, let me go a little bit of detail to this form and the puppet master thing. So uh, we have, a, so we want to have our cloud services as a uh, resilient to fail, right? Because every hardware can be failed. You don't want to, today you have a, a box fail uh, you need to have some, you, you, want, you need some manual process to build this up. So what we had is we using the Puppet and the Foreman to do this. For each of node, it will, um, for example, for I, have a, I, have, I have a new Nova node one for adding to my uh, environment. What I need to do is I have, an, I have this box by some provisioning process. What I need to do is we, I add this node to the host group of the form in the foreman. So foreman will then know that this node belongs to a Nova host group. And in the foreman also we related this, the, the Nova puppet class with this host group. So for when, when the node come up saying, hey, what I should do? And sending a request to the puppet master Puppy master, then we are sending a ENC request to the foreman. Foreman will return back, hey, you belong to this Nova, Nova API host group, and you should apply this puppy class. And the puppy master then will do some comparison and send it back to the node. This is the catalog you should do. And in the node, puppy agent will then download the Nova package, Nova API package, and uh, setting up all the configurations, and uh, starting up the Nova service. So this is how we are uh, using this puppet to the follow deployment. So back to my uh, previous question. So when you have a hardware failure, what do you should do? What we need to do is we onboard a new box and register it to the foreman, same foreman host group. Then it will automatically taking over the starting up the services, for example, Nova Neutron services like this. So this is how we do the deployment in the site. And uh, at first, we sh um, in our dev environment, we're using the same thing. We're using the uh, uh, bare metals, and we're using Foreman and Puppet Master as the seed. And uh, we do some uh, manual population of the para Puppet parameters in the Foreman. <coughs> For example, a version, the, um, the MySQL database, my, my database. So this is the good thing, good part for this is we're using the same configuration management tool, as, same as the you know, production. But the bad thing is, can, everybody can imagine, so this, um, the hardware has some limitation. We, every time uh, I want a new thing, I need to have some new hardware. The hardware, has, the hardware resources has limited, has limitations. And it's pretty heavy process and hard to repeat. And everyone, if everyone is using a shared environment, uh, I'm a Nova developer and he's uh, another, uh, some other guy is a Neutron development. Everyone only focus his own part. And some, later on, some days later, we will find the whole dev environment will be broken because we are not maintaining so well, right? It's after a period of time, we need to do some cleanup. So we have a, another solution we call Pinocchio, uh, which is based on the cloud. It's uh, cloud over cloud. 
So, uh, so we think about this way. We already has we already has a cloud running on, so we can ask cloud to get some computer resource and a network resource, and we're setting up another cloud on the top of this cloud, uh, in the, our Dev VPC, the Dev uh, private cloud. So we during this process, the Pinocchio tool we are asking the Pinocchio tool actually is um, is an oxygen engine uh, in this diagram. It will asking, uh, it will take the input from the JSON. The JSON will specify which version you want, the Nova version, neutral version, the monitoring service version, and the topology. So where you want to put? Do you want to put neutron and the Nova in the same node? Uh, do you want to use a Nova cell? Now how many Nova compute you want? Yeah, things like that. So take these two as an input. It will then, invoking the Nova API to the, our production cloud environment to get some VMs in that VPC. So you can, you can get a bunch of the VMs and then it will running some script to invoking the Puppet class. In this diagram, we are not using the uh, foreman and the Puppet Master because we are using the uh, locally, local, locally applied of Puppet. So after you get the VM, Pinocchio then will trigger the, the puppet run. So everyone will then follow the, the, the topology we defined previously to set up the Nova service, neutron service, and, uh, and other services in, this, in your cloud. So it is, um, it, it, it is um, better than previous, uh, we, what we had for the Hardware shared lab. It is um, we're still using the same configuration management tool, using the same puppet code to do the deployment process as as we do for the production environment, and it's all automated. So what you need to do is using a command to do um, and the input input define the topology configuration and the define the versions you want, and done. And several. Um, pretty, I guess, uh, 10 minutes later, you, you can get uh, your own dev cloud. But it is still heavy, because um, I need to wait a bunch of minutes to wait, when, to, to wait my dev cloud out, up. And it's not flexible. The, the meaning of the not flexible is, for example, I don't currently have a dev cloud starting up uh, without the Nova cell. But later on, I want to test some future with Nova Cell. What I need to do? What I need to do? You need to uh, another Dev Cloud with a new configured topology. The RCI is currently on this model, and the previous, uh, the pre, the first three components is as same as upstream. We have a Garrett review, we have Zoe, and we have we have a Jenkins. So it's the same as the uh, country, uh, the community did, community does. The difference is in on the behind. So it will trigger a Pinocchio run in the approval job of the Garrett. It will then it will starting up a dev cloud on the VMs, cloud on cloud, and then setting this up. And then after that, it will trigger a Tempest run. So the Tempest actually running against a cloud that actually has the same topology and the configurations in our side. So as I said, this um, is better than previous hardware lab, uh, but still has some issues because uh, not flexible and pretty heavy. So we're using Collar. The color is uh, we have one every service is has is a um, Docker container, and we do did some customizations for each of the image that the color project provide, um, and upload this image as a parent image to our own uh, Docker registry. And um, for this um, for this time for this version. We need to uh, ask a cloud, because we already have a cloud, right? And you can ask cloud to get, give you some compute resource, 
give you some compute. And then after you get this compute, you can define the uh, environment. In this environment, you define, okay, I want which host I want to use, which Nova should run it on which host, and Neutron should run it on which host. And you define this, you can use in the Docker Compose um, that are provided by Color Project. And then it will launch, it launch all the um, container on this Docker hoster. So it is pretty flexible, because think about this. When you have a VM, you, you did something wrong. You probably your VM is screwed up. You need to clean this VM out, and you, it's pretty hard to clean this VM up. Probably you need to get another VM. But for this, for in this time, what you need to do is just stop, stop the process, right? And then start another one. It's pretty clean. It's, um, all this, once you did something on this VM, you know, Docker host, you know, Docker host, and uh, you want to do another, another thing, you just stop that, and each time it's isolated, pretty, it's uh, isolated with each other. And uh, um, for our pattern, we didn't use in the uh, multi-host Ansible yet, because when we do, when we did this, um, multi-host Ansible is not support yet. So what we what we did is we uh, plug in the puppet code in the image. So every time the Docker uh, container is starting up, it will run in the puppet. So it is again it is it is using the same puppet code that we deploy to our production. The reason that why we why why don't we using every time we using a new image is because we want uh, backward compatible ability in our production environment, so we can. Because in our production environment, we're still using the using the, the puppet to the deployment. And the, the, the better, another better part for this one is still uh, partially automated. We need to have this uh, um, image upload first, right? And we need to have the have the all these Docker host provision first. And uh, for this. Um, Using by using the uh, caller, we are using the killer version. As I said, we didn't using the uh, Ansible multi host yet, and uh, we need to to make it work. We uh, added a puppet in the Docker, so we can using. Uh, it's pretty important for us to using the same code in the production and the dev. And also, all the environment variables are injected as puppet effects. So puppet, when the puppet is running, it can get the effects that are injected outside. And uh, modify our puppet code, because the pre previous puppet code is using, uh, we are using is adapted for the uh, VM. And we're using to, we have to use it as a microservice model. And uh, the color project doesn't, didn't support Nova Cell and the overlay networks. And uh, um, this is a user case, it's perfectly uh, for, our, uh, for our, the new approach to setting up the development, dev environment and the test environment. We had an uh, upgrading in earlier of this year from Havana to Juno. And we decided to upgrade them one by one, one service by one service. I think we did um, Keystone first, and then Nova Neutron. So we are uh, building up, the, the, the way we did this is we're building up a full Havana environment, and we do the upgrade one by one. And once we upgrade the Keystone, and we trigger a full test in the, in the whole testing environment, and so in the testing environment, you have a Juno, Keystone, and all the other services are uh, Havana. And then after the testing, if, if it went through, we will then running a, a Juno Tempest test, Juno test cases on this environment. And then if everything goes through, we will then to upgrade all the um, Nova to the Juno. And again, do the testing, both, both for the Havana version and the Juno version. So it's pretty flexible. By doing this way, it, uh, by, doing the, by doing the container way, it's pretty flexible for us to replace all the services in the, uh, the same environment. So lessons learned. 
we need to automate everything. Uh, I know this automation thing has been talked about by everybody, but uh, for us, it's, um, it's important, right? Because it's about uh, infrastructure build up. So how you build up your infrastructure in your production, and you need to do the same thing for your uh, dev and the testing environment. And the, all the automation thing need to be need, means repeatable. It doesn't mean um, you do this automation once, you have a bunch of scripts, and uh, then after you upgrade in Juno, your scripts um, cannot work anymore. And they expect the failures. Um, especially, it will be flexible for you when you're using container as a, your, as your uh, OpenStack service. So every, um, every part can be filled. And you can, you want, you probably, especially for important for your uh, development, process, development environment, you, you want to have the flexible flexibility to change each of the service. And uh, it, you want to have the, it, the debugging is friendly because um, the user of this pattern is that developer. So they want to do these things. And uh, it's important for us is the speed. So how, how long you can take out how long you can setting up a dev environment is important for us. For example, if you are a developer, you want to setting up a new dev environment. If it takes more than like 30 minutes, you're gonna, uh, what are you gonna do, right? You want to have a new environment. If you, can, you, if you have the capability to setting up a dev environment in minutes, it will be awesome, right? The challenges we had. Uh, we are not using the, this Docker thing in our production department yet. So that's the reason uh, uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit weird that uh, for the for we, for uh, color project, we still need to have a puppy that running inside of the image. And we need to uh, have more elements to the receipt. We need to have the um, elastic, Elasticsearch ELK server, and uh, um, the Graphite and the Grafana. And uh, we are using the Zapix as monitoring, and uh, the HA setup, this, all these things is not uh, down in for, our, for our container based thing. And, and we had some drift between us and the color, color upstream code. Um, the reason is we have some specifically uh, thing. For example, the OVN thing, the, we are using the NSS to uh, run in the overlay. So we have some spe specifically thing for our environment. And we want to move into the multi-host service. In fact, when, uh, for our Kubernetes cluster, we are using this way. And uh, um, we are using this uh, multi-host services by Ansible to do the whole, whole, whole cluster setting up. And uh, we need to think about how to do the orchestration, including the, the follow pro color project. For example, you have some dependencies between each other, right? Uh, you, ha you, want, you want to, the, the services dependencies should be orchestrated by your orchestration layer. Um, okay, I think that's it. Questions? Yes, uh, we, as I said, we, we are, uh, the, the Kubernetes cluster, we are, we are, we are investing, are uh, using that thing. And then uh, we also have invested something on the heat, because heat is actually a orchestration layer for OpenStack. We also use that thing to try to using that thing to building up, to orchestrate our dev environment setting up, right? So heat can um, heat on the, heat can heat on the, uh, the, the each OpenStack service to get a compute, get a new, uh, new network, and uh, stop starting up the services. Uh, what, what's the issues, if any, have you run into with um, upgrading from one container to a newer version of that container? Um, you mean the a new, new image? 
we so the the issues we do not have because every time we if we want to do the upgrading we are using we clean the remove the previous one and starting another one and then in that side in, inside of that docker container it will running a puppet up to setting the all the services up Uh, we are still evaluating that thing. Okay, thank you. <laughs>